I want to break down how I was able to create this animation in Flutter with seemingly one line of code. If we take a look at the code pen, you might already be able to tell that, hey, this looks like one line of code, but there are obviously many statements, right? So the first thing we can do is format it. And it already looks a lot more readable. And of course, the only reason to put it into a single line is to say, hey, there are really not many characters that create this full animation. And I want to break it down completely. So let's start. The first step obviously would be formatting. And now everything makes a little more sense. Right, we have a main function and that does something, but it's still kind of confusing. So let's move on. Nothing was typed before, everything was just a var to make it shorter. But if we type it, it makes more sense. So here you can see we have a duration and that would actually be the begin. Duration, I called it that. And we can replace this W by window to actually say, hey, we're using the window. And you can always access this window from .ui, so you can always access it in Flutter, but you usually don't want to do it. As it says, please try to avoid statically referencing this and instead use a binding for dependency resolution such as widgetsbinding.instance.window because you don't usually want to go that low level, but I will touch on that later. Now let's just format it a bit better, so we have separated the main function from the on begin frame function because what we just do is say okay the window on begin frame is our custom on begin frame function and then we schedule a frame and if we continue that you can see hey now this is a lot more readable because we have a timestamp that's given to us and based on that we also create the begin um here that will be more readable later on we can also <laughs> try to do some line breaks format it and then the next thing is the logical size that was a bit confusing before but we need to get the logical size when we are at this low level so we can get the physical size from the window and the device pixel ratio and using that we can get the logical size which we use to paint onto the canvas and this canvas which we create here basically it takes a picture recorder because this picture recorder allows us to basically create an image that we give to the window. So we can create a canvas. You might have seen used a canvas before if you've used custom paint in Flutter. Then in that case, you use a canvas or in a render object, you also use a canvas there. So we create our own canvas here, just giving it a picture recorder and a rectangle that is based on the logical size. So this creates a rectangle that is exactly the logical size and starts at zero, zero, top left. Now you can see this is the T I was talking about the time and we can actually go a bit further and say the begin will be equal to the timestamp on the first frame. And this means after the first frame, this is called again and again. And then we have um, a timestamp, which is just the time that has passed since the first frame and seconds, which allows us to create this beautiful animation. And the rest will be clean up now because you can already kind of see now, okay, this is the painting loop here. This will probably create the shape and it's quite crazy, right? This small loop creates this whole animation. Everything else is just um, set up. For example, this is also just set up, but we can make all of this a little more readable. So here you can see this is just a transparent color that's being painted. And you might ask, what does it do? Painting a transparent color shouldn't do anything. Well, it seems that if you don't do it, you really get lags from the window painting. It's probably because it needs to, whatever, right? You just, this is just a transparent um, color that's being painted. So it doesn't visually do anything but clean up the last frame, the previous frame. But we can change that color later. And this is everything that paints the shape. 
there's not much to improve about this loop in terms of readability. We can just kind of take the rect out of here and the color. But other than that, it's a lot of math involved. As you can see, we can say, okay, this is the dot width and height, because the only thing we're doing is drawing rects, very man like many small rects. If you take a look at the animation again, you will see that there are these dots. And these are in reality, just small rectangles. So each of these dots is a small rectangle. And the size of that is defined by the loop, right? By I um, over some constant that I chose because I thought this fits best. And then we can create a rectangle that's based on <laughs> some, some math, I can, we can alter it a bit to get some different patterns, but it isn't that easy to break down. It's also a lot of trial and error, at least for me, maybe for the person that created it originally, it's not that but we will see. And then we have a color and that we can alter as well. And then we just draw it. The last thing to do here is maybe clean up the rendering because that might be a little bit confusing. We have a scene builder. And then there's some matrix transformations. That it just right, <laughs> just take that for granted. Um, it's just a um, yeah, transform for the scene builder. And then we put our what we put painted onto the canvas into the scene builder. And then we build a scene and render it. And then we schedule the next frame again. And what this does, it means that when the painting is done, on begin frame will be called again, right? Because we schedule the next frame immediately. So that's it in terms of breaking it down. And now just to prove that this is actually working, right, that I actually just broke it down and didn't break it. We can paste it in the, in here and check if it still works. See here the code pen should right, we need to rerun it. Now, you will see it will build again. And we still see the same animation. And before I move on to show some of how the animation itself is created, let's go to flutter and see where this even fits into flutter because if you look at the code on begin frame or whatever, this isn't anything you would encounter normally. And there's a good reason for it. If we check the flutter examples, so this is just in the flutter github repo, the examples directory, then we can see a layers example. And the layer you usually access is the widgets layer. And this widgets layer, if we take a look at one file here, you will see Okay, this is pretty much what I'm used to, right? We use run app and create widgets, but you can go more low level than that. There would be the rendering layer, which you don't encounter. <laughs> it's basically you use the rendering flutter binding yourself and just put render objects in there and not any widgets. But then there's the raw layer, which is really the lowest level. And that does look exactly like what I showed you. If you take a look at the canvas example, it's very similar, right? Here, you can already see the imports are the same. Essentially, they just use the namespace for UI. And then also the main function is the same. They have a begin frame, where they broke it up into composition, where they do the same matrix transformation, the same scene building. And Everything else is also the same. Right, they have the logical size, and so on. So this raw level raw layer is really flutter, it's just very low level. And the abstraction is really useful because you don't want to be doing this really this, you don't want to be doing this in an app, right? It's fun like this to create some nice animations that are just based on time. But if you need anything, right, any user input, anything, you don't want this low level 
stuff. You want abstraction, and that's why there are different layers. Okay, <laughs> having said that, we can actually go into trying out some stuff. We can say, hey, how do we actually manipulate this animation? And there's some obvious stuff. For example, here we can see the color. This is the color of each dot. And I already annotated it here. We have RGB and opacity. Opacity is probably not that interesting because we're not going to see a change. But we could say instead of here changing the green color with the index, we could change the blue color, the blue part of the color instead. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. So we change the blue part instead and just say, okay, the green component is always 200 out of 256, of course. If we rerun that, you will see that now stuff will be yellow instead because we are altering the green part instead of the blue part. So now it's yellow. It doesn't really look nice on white. So let's change the background color. Well, we're just painting transparent here. We can actually paint black instead. And then it will look pleasing again. It's just a bit of a different look. And I think that already shows how this is done in general. Now for the rest of the loop, it's obviously <laughs> it has a lot to do with sine and cosine. And that's kind of mandatory. I will switch over to Twitter in a second and show you where this idea comes from. So when we use these periodic functions, the sine and cosine waves, I suppose, then we can create these awesome patterns. And one easy, easy thing to do here would be to say, okay, for the cosine, we want to move along the cosine waves more slowly. And then we can say, okay, let's say 12 times J in Twitter instead of 20 times times j, where j is just a multiple of i, and i is just the loop we're going through for every dot. So if we rerun this, you will see a different pattern emerge. As you can see, it's a lot more star shaped, I would say, or how do you call it? I don't, I'm not exactly sure. But this already kind of shows how this whole thing is composed. If we take the dot count down for the I here, um, let's say some random number, 120, you will see now only 420 dots and a bunch of other stuff will change. The motion seems a lot slower now because obviously the sine progression and cosine pr progression is also based on J, which is based on I, which means that kind of means if we take i down it will be slower so we could fight this by saying okay the time progresses faster for example now that i is way smaller we need to have it twice as fast and then it will look similar again just with uh, a lower dot count but generally i think it should be clear now how this kind of animation is possible it's really crazy what you can do and it's really interesting in my opinion. For example, something similar would be this. It's the same concept, it uses the exact same code for the setup and just some different painting code. Obviously if we format it you will be able to see it again. Yeah, we just have some... This time it's not a loop, this time it's recursion, but it's the same concept. And that's the triangle. Just for the record, I did not come up with this. <laughs> um, you can already, you can also see it in the comments here. For example, the person that came up with this triangle would be Pavel, or I guess, I, I suppose that's how you pronounce the name, on Twitter. And this takes a little bit away from Dart. This is JavaScript, and this is how it looks. But it shows how you can take the exact same context, um, the exact same concept of canvas painting to Flutter as well, which is really awesome. And that's it. That shows 
you exactly how you can do stuff like this. This shows how you can paint on the lowest level, on the absolutely lowest level in Flutter. And also shows you a bit of how you can play with the canvas in this case. I hope that it was interesting and helpful to some. You can learn anything, creative creator, maybe not. Out.